All right, so this deck of cards is designed to help you get through the passage. Synthesis of the anti-tumor drug Combretta Satin and its derivatives. And it's taken from the chemical and physical foundations of biological system sections, but it really deals with more chemistry than it does physics. Okay. The first thing that I want you to do is draw an isopropyl group. So draw an isopropyl group and I'll give you a moment to formulate your answer. All right, so here we have our isopropyl group. And the squiggly can represent its attachment to any molecule. And notice that it's a tripartite um, formation composed of three carbons and their associated hydrogens. Okay. Now I want you to draw an isobutyl group. I'll give you a moment to formulate your answer. So draw an isobutyl group. All right, so here we have our isobutyl group. And this, um, Formation often confuses some people. So here again, we have a tripartite backbone. And then the fourth carbon it is attached to the methyl, I mean to the central carbon as a methyl group. If the squiggly were right here, that would be a tert butyl group. But no, it's attached to this carbon on the bottom. Or you can call this a methylene group, a CH2, okay? In HNMR, arrow hydrogens have peaks at blank parts per million. So arrow, that just means a free radical. Like so. So this would be an arrow, a free radical that has an unpaired electron, but um, no charge. Okay, so this is an arrow. And this is a concept that's hard to grasp for some people as well, but in worst case scenario, just memorize. So arrow hydrogens have peaks at blank parts per million. The answer is seven parts per million. So arrow groups have peaks. So if this were your NMR spectrum, and you had one, two, three, because you know for um, left to right on an NMR spectrum, the numbers are descending. Let's say you got over here to seven. So you would have a peak at seven, and this would indicate an arrow group. In H and MR, sp2 hydrogens have peaks above blank parts per million. So sp2 hydrogens, and sp2 just refers to a carbon that has a double bond, whether it's double bonded to another carbon, an oxygen, or even a nitrogen. Okay, and so its associated hydrogens would give a peak 
above blank parts per million. And above means a little bit greater than. So sp2 hydrogens would give a peak above 5 parts per million. So if this is your NMR spectrum, and you had like, let's say, 4, 5, and 6, above means above, and below 5 parts per million would be in this region. In HNMR, methoxy hydrogens appear around blank parts per million since they are sp3 protons near an electron withdrawing oxygen, hence the shielded. Methoxy re refers to this. You have an oxygen single bonded to a methyl group. CH3. Okay. And because this oxygen is so electronegative, meaning that it loves to, you know, withdraw all the electrons to itself, that's where we get this word from, the shielding. That means for the hydrogens, the oxygen over here is pulling on its associated balance electron. Oh yeah, and sp3 would refer to this carbon because it's bonded to four things, whereas sp3 referred to carbon with a double bond that was overall bonded to three things. Okay. So again... So again, sp3 Okay, so the, I mistakenly jumped too, ahead too fast. So the answer to that would be four. So sp3 hydrogens, that's carbon. So sp3 hydrogens, and the sp3 refers to the hybrid orbitals of carbon bonded to four things. So this would be a sp3 hydrogen. And on an NMR spectrum, it would give a signal at roughly four parts per million. In HNMR, okay. a multiplet or singlet indicates that there is a proton attached to a carbon whose neighbors have several hydrogens. So is the correct answer choice multiplet or singlet? I'll give you a moment to think. The answer is multiplet. So just to illustrate, if I have a carbon, this single carbon would give a multiplet signal if it's attached to two different types of environments. And when I say environment, a carbon on one side that has, let's say, three methyl hydrogen. And the carbon on the other side, it's probably associated with an alcohol functional group. And it 
its associated hydrogen. So this environment over here is different from this environment over here. Hence, these three hydrogens will split the signal as well as these two hydrogens will split the signal and you'll get multiple squigglies. You'll get something on an HNMR that looks like this. And what people do is sometimes they think because you have multiple lines, this indicates multiple different hydrogens. And usually the case is it's one hydrogen being split by two or three different environments.